In this video, you want to find the area of the region bounded by the x-axis, the curve y equals root of x, and the tangent line to root of x at x equals 4. So the region clearly is the region here. So before we proceed, well, we have to find the equation of the tangent line to root of x at x equals 4. Now the first observation is, well, we need a y value at x equals 4. Well, root of 4 is 2. So the corresponding y value here is 2. So how do we find the equation of a tangent line? Well, the equation of a tangent line, of course, is a line. So y equals mx plus b. m, if you recall, is the slope of the line. Therefore, the derivative of the function at x equals 4. So let's differentiate root of x. And if you recall by the power rule, the derivative of root of x, thinking of x to the 1 half as the square root of x, we get 1 over 2 root of x after a simplification. So m will be the derivative specifically when x is 4. So m will be equal to 1 over 2 times the root of 4. Root of 4 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, so m is 1 quarter. So now I have the slope of the tangent line to root of x at x equals 4. The slope is a quarter, so the line will be 1 quarter x plus b. Or if you prefer x over 4, same thing, plus b. And how do we find the constant term b? Of course, using the fact that the tangent line passes through the point x equals 4, y equals 2. So we can substitute in here with the appropriate x and y values and solve for b. So plug in for y, 2. And for x, 4. So you get 2 equals, well, 4 over 4 is 1, so 1 plus b. Subtract 1, so of course b is equal to 2 minus 1, which is 1. So b equals 1. So now we have the equation of our tangent line. x over 4 plus 1. So let me write it here. So now we have the equation of the tangent line and the original curve. So we're good to go. Now as always, when we face a problem of finding the area of a region bounded by specific curves, we have to make a choice. Do we go with vertical rectangles or horizontal rectangles? Well, let's see what happens if we go with vertical rectangles. Thinking of the height of the rectangles, the curve on top is always the same, so there is no change there. But the curve on the bottom changes from the x-axis to square root function. So as there's a change on the bottom curve, there will be a change in measuring the height of the rectangles. If we go with the rectangle here, the height will be the y value on the tangent line, but the height of a rectangle here will be the y value on the tangent line minus the y value on the square root function. So two separate heights, two separate sets of rectangles, therefore this would lead to two separate definite integrals. What about horizontal rectangles? Well, then we have a rectangle, say, like this. So we will need the length of the rectangle. So this will be the right value minus the left value. But the right curve is always the same, the square root function. And the left curve is always the same, the tangent line. So because the curve on the right and the curve on the left never change across the entire region, this will yield a single set of rectangles, therefore, a single definite integral. So a much better solution here is to go with a single set of horizontal rectangles. As always, let's draw a generic horizontal rectangle. And let me exaggerate its width. So if we can find the area of this rectangle, then by adding the area of all the other rectangles, we will obtain the total area of the region. So the simplest thing first is the width of the rectangle. 
which is a small change along the y-axis, therefore the width is dy. Now what we're missing now is the length of the rectangle. Now the length of the rectangle is a segment along the x-axis, so we need the two x values to the right and the left of our rectangle. So the question is, when we're on this curve, and again because we integrate with respect to y, Everything we measure must be a function of y. So we ask, at this point, what is the x value in terms of y? Well, at this point, we are on the square root function. So if y equals root of x, square both sides to cancel the square root. So x is y squared. What about the x value at the left-hand point? Well, now we are no longer on the square root, but on the tangent line. So y is x over 4 plus 1. So if you isolate for x in terms of y, subtract 1 and times 4. So x will be 4 times y minus 1. So now we have the larger x value and the smaller x value in terms of y. So we can find the area of the rectangle. So the area of the rectangle will be the height times the width, the height again the length of this segment, the larger x value y squared, minus the smaller x value 4 times y minus 1. This is again the length of our rectangle times the width dy. So this is the area of a generic rectangle covering up the region. And of course we only have now the area of an infinitesimal rectangle. To obtain the total area of the region we have to sum the area of these rectangles and sum from where to where. Well we're summing with respect to y so along the y-axis. So we have to look at the span of the region along the y-axis. So the region starts here when, of course, y is equal to 0. And the region goes all the way up to this point where y equals 2. So this will yield the total area of the region. And now, of course, we can evaluate this quite simply with the fundamental theorem of calculus. Before we do, let's multiply across a negative 4 here. So then we can use the power rule. So we get y squared minus 4y. Negative 4 times negative 1 is plus 4. So by the fundamental theorem of calculus, we have to find first an antiderivative. So power rule here, y cubed over 3 minus 4 times, power rule again, y squared over 2, but 4 over 2 is 2, so we're left with 2y squared, plus 4 times y as the derivative of y is 1. So we have our antiderivative, and we must evaluate from 0 to 2. Now we can plug in. So replacing here y by 2, so 2 cubed is 8 over 3 minus 2 times 2 squared. But 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8, so minus 8, plus 4 times y when y is 2, 4 times 2 is 8, so plus 8, minus the expression when y is 0, but if you plug in y equals 0 in here, everything vanishes, so we won't write y minus 0. So we're left quite simply with 8 thirds minus 8 plus 8. Well, these two cancel and we're left with 8 over 3, which completes our solution. So, to conclude, the area of the region bounded by the tangent line to root of x at 4, root of x itself, and the x-axis is exactly equal to 8 over 3. So if you want at the very end, you can shade the entire region
and point that the region of the area of this region is exactly 8 over 3. 